Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In 1985, I ended up taking a class from Dale Nish at Brigham Young University. Dale was in charge of the woodworking portion of that department. And one of the things that I learned from him was this wooden hinge. Now, if you haven't seen this, because I have produced it in some other videos, this makes use of a very clever design whereby a piece of wooden dowel is used to create a hinge on a small box. And it's a function of drilling a little hole into the end of each segment of the dowel, putting in a little piece of welding rod, it would be the pivot point, and you simply glue one piece to the bottom and the next piece to the top, top, bottom, top, bottom. Well, I've done thousands of these, and I can say that now. It's uh, really clean as you open it and close it. People are fascinated by it. I've made multiple small boxes, but I also experimented with using it on furniture. So I want to show you this chest I made. Now, I built this back in maybe 1988 or 89. It has survived remarkably well. However, one of the advantages of solid wood furniture is when it gets destroyed by your children, you can turn around, redo it, and voila, it's as good as new. In fact, when I first built this, the, uh, the dovetails protruded about a sixteenth of an inch and they were chamfered off and looked really cool because they stood out. And these two pieces down here are actually a part of the bottom that protrude through and what they do is they allow that solid wood bottom to move equal distance from the center. And there's not enough movement in that small section right there to cause a problem. Well, if you come around to the back side, I, I did the wooden hinge on this as well. And this was actually stuck out about a sixteenth of an inch, but my kids end up uh, destroying this thing, so I end up having to flush it all off because it was impossible to try to come in and clean up the surface when you had these pins all sticking out top and bottom. Anyway, if you look at this, now what I did here that I might not do again is I actually used a, both an ash dowel and a cherry dowel, and I made it look like this was a continuation of the top and this was a continuation of the bottom. But it's strong, extremely rugged. In fact, this has been in my house for 30, almost 30 years, and it still, uh, it still works. And that's what it looks like on the underside. Now, what we've just recently come up with, and it will be available on our site very soon, is, uh, by the way, this is one, so I found this, uh, being the teaching system at BYU, I had access to the storage facility. And I found this one cherry board that was at least 16 inches wide. In fact, I remember it might have been even wider. So if you were to follow the grain, it goes all the way around. That's one wide piece. And the top, just so that you know, is actually MDF with this fiddleback ash veneer on it. So what I did is I took the piece of MDF, and the reason is it's nice and stable, wasn't going to move, and I put a solid wood band on the ends and on the two long sides. You had to do that for the back in order to get good gluing. And I, I, and, uh, I built these little lid stays that are made out of wood. They both were broken off over time, and these have been these are the replacements. But that's uh, you know a nice pretty piece of ash, and that was my, my first attempt at any carving. If you look on here, there's uh, little handles to do the to lift it by. A little crude, but it worked. Anyway, let me show you our kit. We have just come out with this. It compri it consists of six pieces. So this is for a quarter inch dowel. This is for a three eighths. This is for a half, and this is for a three-quarter. And then you have these two pieces. Now this one, uh, what you do is you take your quarter-inch, uh, pardon me, your eighth-inch sixteenth, let's try that, sixteenth-inch drill bit, and put that in there. Actually, I come in from this side. Protrude as much as you want to drill into your dowel, and then tighten that up with a set screw. Now I actually have a second set screw so that you can squeeze it between the set screws because occasionally you put too much pressure on this, you break that drill. And then this mounts into your cordless drill. You screw this onto the bottom side. And then as that's spinning in your drill, you take your piece of quarter inch dowel and as you stick it in, this, in the end of this hole, it centers it. That's a little bit heavier than quarter inch. Let me get one that's true. Okay, how about one that's not there? As you stick this in, it centers it, and then as you push it a little bit further, it engages that bit. Drills gives you a perfectly centered quarter-inch diameter hole in the middle of the uh, dowel. doesn't have to go very far, just enough to encapsulate that little pin. Now what we have here are the two holes 
when you take that out, that allows the sawdust to escape, so you're not having to clean that out every time you have to turn around and do the other section of the dowel. And if you want to use a 3 8 you simply take the 3 8 and screw that one on. Now, if you get into the bigger sizes, I would suggest that you move up to the 8 inch. So we have the same thing, only this one is drilled for an 8 inch bit. You put your bit in from the back side and leave it, you know, however much however deep you want to drill. I'm short of uh, set screws if you're wondering why I'm having to change this from one to the other. Actually these ones would be a little bit shorter too. So you can adjust that for the depth of your pin and on something a piece of furniture like that I might even go as much as 3 eighths of an inch. So on the bigger sizes whether it's half inch or three quarter. Put that in your drill, spins, you go in there and it perfectly centers your hole. The problem with this particular uh, technique of doing a wood hinge is that if you don't get that little hole perfectly centered, it really makes it so that the hinge doesn't work properly. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up the router and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you the process of actually making the hinge. We'll do a little segment of it so that you'll know exactly what to do. All right, see you in a second. Okay, in addition to the obvious, which would be a router, you're going to need a core box bit. And if you're not familiar with it, a core box bit is designed to cut a half a circle. So this is a three-quarter inch core box bit, so it's three-quarters of an inch from there to there. This is a half inch core box bit, and this is a quarter inch core box bit. So obviously you're going to match that to the size of your dowel, and you're going to match that to the size of whatever it is you're building. You don't want it to be too small or too big. And you also want to make sure that that's truly a half round. So what I do to test it is I put that in the router and I'll cut right down through the middle of a piece of scrap. And then I'll set my dowel in there and make sure that it, when it sets in that half round that has been cut by the core box bit, that it actually fits in there just like it should. You'll find that sometimes the bits will be more pointed than they are round and that's not going to work very well. You need good contact in order for the glue to hold this thing together. All right, I'm going to put that in the router bit and we'll be right back. Now, I'm just going to cut this in some pine. So this is going to represent the lid and this is going to represent the, ba the bottom of the uh, chest, the box, whatever it is. So what we're going to do, we'll make this the uh, that ugly knot we'll see on the inside. This is going to be the outside. We're going to come in here and we are going to cut a portion of that bit. Now we have to have, actually we have to have this much, some coming back here, and here, from here to here, needs to be, oh, about um, 40, uh, what we, yes, it would be 49 percent of the three-quarter inch. And then on the lid, we're going to do, going to do the same thing, we're going to cut the other 49 percent. And the reason why we want 49% is when we put it together, that didn't work off too well, when we put it together and it sandwiches the dowel in there, we don't want it to be sprung. In other words, there needs to be a little bit of a gap on the inside. I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. But in order to do this, we leave the bit in the same position. But on this one, we're going to run it up like this across the bit. And on the lid, we're going to run it down like this across the bit. So I've got a fence added to my fence, sacrificial fence, because I need to cover a portion of the bit. As I said, I don't want that coming up too far. It can't come up more than half of the uh, overall three-quarter inch. Now let me just grab a steel ruler. So I can get it close. Oh, that's going. That should be up less than just under three eighths of an inch. I don't have an exact setting that I want on here. Drop that down a little bit. We have to try it and check it. In fact, the best way to do that is actually to take a section of dowel. Come over here. 
Okay, so there's our our uh, perfectly centered hole. Now, I'm going to get a scrap, and what we'll do is we'll run that over there and make sure that we're just below the center point on that. So give me a second to find a scrap. Okay, position of the fence this way is a lot easier to judge because you can simply look at where the top of the, of the center of the bit is, and you'll move your fence over. You want to make sure you have enough wood on the outside of that. I'm going to show you on here. It's easier. I've got a straight edge somewhere. So we're, we are going to set it. We have to have enough wood on the outside of that to secure it. So we're, when we flush off the back side of the dowel, we want to have enough wood left out here. So what we're going to do is just kind of guess at where that point is in relation to the fence that will provide us with this amount. And uh, I'll eyeball that. We may have to fine tune it, but I think that's okay. It's a little harder to judge the up and down position of this. That's when you've got to do some testing. Okay, now I've got the vacuum set up to suck away some of this dust. <laughs> So we set that in. Now I'm going to put a straight edge on there to carry that line over, like so. And that's that's not deep enough. We should be at. A, if we actually move that down a little bit, we should be somewhere about like that. So we've got to bring that up a little bit more. Now I've got to stop on here. That'll make it so that I can do that a little more accurately. Okay, try that. Again. because you've got to save that part that comes back around. Put that in position. Bring this over. Okay, so that's just, that looks to be just about right. There's a little less than half, a little less of, than half of that eighth inch hole showing. And then as far as down here, that's going to leave us that much, which is plenty. But where we position the center of this dowel this way will determine how far up the lid will open. And I prefer not to have it go all the way back like that, because when you do, then you can ex you see down through there. It's nice to have it stop at about that angle. Let's try this. If I were doing this and it was any smaller, I'd have another center piece in here so that you had better support right up to the cutter. In fact, on the fence, it's even good to have a sacrificial fence so that you actually move the fence into the cutter 
So it's supported all the way around, kind of like a, a zero clearance on a table saw. And what that does is it prevents any chipping or tearing when the bit is cutting the edge. Okay, so this is the bottom. So I'm going to stand it up like this. The outside is facing the fence. so it's an easy cut. If you're using a hardwood, you may have to do this in a couple of stages. So you definitely want to have, you want to have some way of stopping your router where it's at its top position. Now I'm just going to make sure there's no burr left on here. And then I'll run it again. Okay, so that's good and clean. So that's the back of the box. Now this is going to be my lid. So this is the top. This is the back. That's the part that's going to run against the fence, laying flat like this. Now to make sure that we've got everything positioned properly, what we'll do is take that section of dowel. See what I mean with a tear out? That wouldn't happen if you had a zero clearance sacrificial fence on there. So if we put this piece in and put that piece in, that appears to be square right there, and you can see the gap. That's what we want. If we didn't have that gap, if we have too much cut away into these two pieces, then it ends up being sprung like that and your lid won't shut properly. You always want just a little bit of a gap there. Okay, I think that'll work. Now, I need to cut up a couple of sections of dowel and then we'll kind of put this together and I'll end it with that. Give me just a second. Okay, before I cut my dowel, what I do is I run a line on there and then I'll come in wherever the cuts are going to be and I'll mark so that when I put it back together, the grain, the grain will all line up. So we'll quickly do these. to have a hole over there. Okay, now I need to know how deep this is. And this is 8th inch welding rod. Oh, it's nice and tight, which is good. But it's too tight. I can force it together, however. So that's about a quarter of an inch. So I want these to be about a half an inch long. So I would cut that about there. Now, when you cut these, you may have to go back over to the grinder. You don't want to mushroom that at all. That needs to be round. And the harder this is, the better it is at not end up getting squeezed. Line this up. Oh, I made that a little bit too long. I'm going to take that over to the next side. Maybe I can do it right here with this. that over to the grinder. This is the second one. That one's probably going to be too long too. 
Actually, you know what we can do even a bit easier is simply bring that drill out a little bit farther. The more drill you have, or the more, yeah, the more of the uh, rod that you have in the dowel, the better it is. Now we need to get that one out. Now, what we would do, what I, the way I do it, whatever part of this is the coarsest as a result of the way it was cut, I would leave that to the outside so it will end up getting uh, cleaned up or taken off when you flush up the backside. So you would go in and you want to mark where the divisions are because one piece is going to be glued, the next one is glued to the top, the next one is glued to the bottom. And I would always go in and wax the area that is not going to receive glue because it's inevitable that some glue is going to squeeze over from here and squeeze over from there and you don't want it seizing your your joint so if you if you come in and I use a q-tip and I just wax right along that line on both sides any glue squeezes over not a, not an issue you would put that in place you would do the exact opposite to your top so you would come in and you would mark your top with that same those same division lines and on the top if we were going to glue here, we would wax on this side and wax on that side. And I always use an even number. Pardon me, an odd number. I, I just like the way it looks, but I like to have the odd number of pieces. So if it was a three-piece hinge, I'd have two on the bottom, one on the top. I never use a three-piece hinge. But if it was a seven-piece, four on the bottom, three on the top. I just think it looks best. And it has to be, go, the whole thing has to go together. So you have to have glued and waxed both pieces. And you would put that in, in position clamp it just enough pressure and as I, as I uh, showed you we want this to be not perfectly square because that will that will now close tight against the other side of the box and you'll have a little bit of a gap in there which is what you want now once the glue is dry you'd come in and just flush that off and carefully open it and you get yourself a perfect wooden hinge you can use it on uh, well, with, with you know, capacity to use three quarter inch. You could use that on just about any blanket box, even cabinet doors. Anyway, if you're interested in this the kit, we've been selling our quarter inch dowel jig for a long drill jig for a long time. That's still on our site, but this new kit that will allow you to uh, use the larger sizes, which will allow you to use it on furniture, will be up there quite shortly. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again in the shop soon.